Welcome back to Around the Farm. I'm your host, Clint Schaffer. And today I wanted to share a little conversation with you that I had with Aaron Ray, who's one of the Ray brothers that farm all the fields around that famous baseball diamond in the middle of Dyersville. Enjoy. So, Aaron, we are sitting here in front of this awesome wrapped combine. How in the heck did this come to fruition here? Yeah, so this uh, was an idea from, you know, the DeKalb marketing team. They kind of pitched it to us um, about uh, about doing a wrap, which we didn't really know what it was going to be. And it turned out pretty cool. Um, you know, in the state, it kind of goes over pretty well, especially with my, you know, with my brother Adam, that the red and yellow, I told him it was too much red and yellow for me. I like the yellow, but not the uh, not the together because I got you. you know, I'm an Iowa guy. Yeah, um, but, a little clashing uh, on the on the so, ISU Iowa here. Yeah, a yeah. little bit. We always get a little chirping back and hey. forth, especially you know in September when the Iowa, Iowa State game's going on. But um, so no, so this really turned out really turned out cool. Uh, yeah, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. I mean, you're you're with Climate Field View. Uh, kind of talk to me about your role. What do you do, and what are you kind of getting prepped for? Yeah. So my day job is a climate activation manager. So I cover Northeast Iowa, kind of the, the Northeast quarter of the state. Um, and basically, you know, I support uh, you know, all of our, our dealers um, and then the growers that they support on, you know, climate, everything climate field view related. So whether that's uh, getting some, some guys that are new to the platform signed up and, and doing a compatibility assessment, or uh, you know, working with our working with our dealers and, and their growers as well, get making sure um, everything's good to go there. So, you know, this time of year, um, we're really working on uh, what I call building the scoreboard. Okay. So when when guys ask me, you know, field view, why should I have it? Why do I need it? Um, you know, I kind of have the analogy of you know, we're across from the field of dreams here in a baseball game. The only way we know who wins and who loses is to look at the scoreboard right yeah. at the end. So um, we got the box score for hits and everything, and you know, errors and runs. Um, and field view is that scoreboard for us farmers. Um, you know, we get to the end of the end of the year. The only way we know what hybrid wins and loses um, is having a scoreboard. So that's what field view is for us. It gives us that box score of, you know, hey, what uh, what innings. Um, you know, did we have uh, home runs or did we did we score in? And allows us to figure out, hey, what uh, um, you know, what nitrogen rate or yep. um, what potash rate was uh, was the best for our field. So, um, so that's what we're talking about, and and really building that that scoreboard right now. So to build that scoreboard, we have to have planting data in um, to know what hybrid won, what lost. To, we got to have that application data in the system just so that you know we can know who wins, who loses. Um, we're building our field region reports right now. So yep. what really helps me with, uh, with my role is, you know, I have the farmer hat. I have my, uh, you know, my rear end is in a tractor cab, you know, a lot in the fall. So it's, it's real for me. So we build our field region reports. We've got a couple of trials um, on a couple of fields that I've already got regions built for so that as soon as we go in uh, and harvest, we can figure out exactly what that yield bump was from that application. So, um, you know, just trying to make sure that that we're keeping track of uh, of everything. And then the last thing is just uh, the activation specialists and I are are going out and transferring pucks. So our our combine here is um, we'll we'll throw the drive up there and uh, just make sure we're all we're all ready to go for harvest. Because that drive may be sitting in a planter or maybe sitting in a sprayer and then taking that field view drive and yep. putting it into the combine then. Yep. That's awesome. And, you know, that's one of the versatile things of, of a drive is, um, you know, you can have it in your planter right away in the in the spring and then move it to your sprayer, then move it to your combine, and you only need one drive and one iPad. So you know, it's just uh, pretty easy, pretty slick. All right, Aaron, you were talking about running trials. Now, do you ever have, like, you know, trials to where, like, you and your brothers have, like, some competitions going where it's like, well, I'm going to run this rate or this population, I'm going to run this one or something of that nature? Yeah, so, you know, what what's really works really well for our our operation is we kind of we all have our own roles or lanes right that yeah. we are are good at that we kind of kind of fit in and 
And sometimes, you know, I try to bleed over into Adams <laughs> a little bit on the agronomy side, um, just so, you know, on planting rates and stuff sure. like that. Um, so there's sometimes I'll, I'll try to sneak uh, some checks in, you know, um, some population checks at, at stuff that is maybe uh, outside of his realm of, uh, of comfort. <laughs> so, you know, just to try to, um, just to try to slide some stuff in there, um, you know, half an acre here or there, but. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we, we just, you know, we're always trying to get better and, um, you know, so sometimes just we gotta pu push the envelope a little bit. So yeah, there's a little bit of competition there of, you know, that's what's awesome about being able to do prescriptions yeah. on all that stuff is it's, it's really easy to, to just throw it in there. And then, then you know, if, if he loads it, then he's not, you know, actively <laughs> looking at it and, uh, and maybe won't catch it. So, you know, I had a similar thing. It would have been uh, two seasons ago. I was planting one of our, uh, our soybean fields and I really wanted to do a low population trial. And I figured since I was out there, it's just easy just to run that. Yep. Right. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I just, Told that after the fact, you right. know. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, hey, another question I got for you. We've been all week. We've been asking uh, everybody what their favorite baseball snack is, right? Okay. Hot dog, nachos, whatever the case is. But since we're standing here next to a combine and it's almost harvest season, I got to know what's your favorite cab snack? <sighs> cab snack. Um, it's a good question. Um, mine's pretty boring. I think trail mix. Okay. Yeah. You know, so it's got you know, but it's got to have the the you know, it's got to have the M and M's. Oh yeah, you got to have the that, chocolate that, aspect that, of it. Right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, that's kind of my favorite, just because uh, you know it's not quite so uh, so messy. Yeah. You know, you don't get uh, you get the the Cheeto dust on your fingers. <laughs> yeah, there you you know, and then you get it. You don't want to get that all over the uh, you know the controls on the tractor and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Probably, uh, probably I, trail mix. I don't think you can go wrong with trail mix. So, no, nope, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, uh, y you were talking about uh, running, uh, you know, region reports and running trials. Yeah. And I I'd love to get your thoughts on this, see if you got the same thoughts I do. Uh, we do the same thing on our farm, right? And we're running region reports, we're running trials. I got a uh, cover crop trial on Asgrow soybeans uh, this yep. year on dads. Uh, when I have those set up, it makes it so much more exciting to get to that field. Like, I can't wait until we get to that particular, either a spot in the field if I ran a population trial or something of that nature. It almost gives you something even, we're already looking forward to harvest, but it's like you're looking forward to something even so much more at that point. Well, I think it's just, uh, you know, the nature of, of farming, right? We always wanna do better than we did last year. Yeah. And so that's why I kind of color code ours, um, you know, so like the treated are blue regions yeah. and then like untreated are green. Um, but just so that everybody knows we can see it in the iPad and we know we're, you know, something's going, uh, coming up so that we don't do a, a calibration right in between or something like yeah. that. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's that, you know, probably that instant gratification is probably not a good thing. Um, in general, for us to be uh, fixated on that, but when it comes to yield and and us on harvest, you know that instant gratification of knowing what uh, treatment or what trial won yeah. is it's powerful information. Um, and I mean that's that's how we get better every single year is figuring out what worked and keep doing that and figuring out what didn't work <laughs> and then stop doing that. So yeah, absolutely, it's, it's pretty cool. So you know, as, as you think about working with uh, working with your brothers and getting them on board to to, to probably all the all the field view activity as well, uh, what's been their reaction as as you've you know continued to probably com you know keep pushing on the technology side? Uh, they love it. I mean, um, you know, and Adam working in ag retail. Every time that I can teach him a little something like that, he loves it because then he can you know take that to his growers. Oh, yeah. um, you know, so it's just kind of. Uh, um, you know, force multiplier there. So if anytime I can teach a dealer, um, whether they're my brother or not, you know, and teach them little tricks or grow, you know, teach growers little tricks, um, you know, then it, it, it spreads out. So, so they, they love it, you know, and Andy too likes having everything. It's just, it's all on his phone. Yep. So when, anytime we have questions, you know, this, that, when was that planted, what's planted where, um, having everything on your phone, just, you know, really easy to access is, is awesome because, we can, you know, we don't have to have 
one program on a desktop computer that has everything that no one can access except me. Now it's, you know, kind of the democratization of, of our data so that everybody's got it whenever they need it and just helps push us forward. You talk about phone too, right? And it's like, I love my iPad, but I don't have my iPad on me all yep. the time, right? Yep. And, uh, and most of the time, hard pressed to catch me without my phone on me. And uh, even getting, I always love talking about this on, uh, on field view, uh, remote view, right? Yep. And whether it's planting or harvest, I travel a lot and I want to see what mole man's doing out in the field, yeah. right? It's yeah. like, I got to fire that up. Yeah. I want to see the numbers that are coming yeah. across, whether it's yield or whether it's, like I said, even in the planter, uh, it just keeps you connected, right? Yeah. I can be yeah. out in Denver, Colorado, and I can see dad run the combine, you know? So Yeah, the remote view, I mean, I love that because I, I have, you know, my iPhone and during the spring, I'll run logistics. Yep. Right, because my phone's ringing, you know, about every forty to fifty seconds, um, with uh, you know, with grower calls. Um, but so I'll run logistics, so I can pull up Remote View and see exactly where they're at with the planter, so that if you know they've got four acres left in a field, I can hop out, go get the, ah, you know, go get the seed yeah. and liquid, so that as soon as they come through and we go to the next field, I'm right there waiting. And, you know, at a, more than a couple times, um, you know, Adam's like, hey, boy, that was good timing. <laughs> how well, how wasn't did you get here accident. so fast? <laughs> but, you know, remote view, uh, I do that in the, in the grain cart all the time. Oh, because yeah. I just, I want to see what's going on, what the yield is. Yeah. And it helps, too, for us planning is bushels remaining. So oh, sure. when you know, hey, we've got, you know, 4,500 bushels remaining, well, then I know how to plan how many trucks. Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. So how many wagons, how many trucks, you know, it allows us to plan really easily to do we need that last set of wagons or not instead of yeah. guessing and then being wrong and wasting 25 minutes or... These are, these are so. ways to use this that I, I swear I haven't even thought of. And that's, uh, that's just so cool to, to, you know, listen to that part of it, that logistical aspect of it yeah. is so cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, Aaron, I just appreciate you stopping by and uh, having a chat in front of this beautiful combine, first off. But uh, I wish you and your family an incredibly safe harvest uh, and just an absolutely great harvest. So thank you, man. You bet. You bet. Good to see you. Yeah, good Thanks. to see you as well. Hey, I want to give Aaron Ray a big thank you for his time. Also, thanks to you, the listener. And if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to hit that like button or subscribe and share it with a friend or two as well. Also, Around the Farm is brought to you by Climate Field View, and we're available wherever you listen to podcasts at. And until next time, we'll see you around the farm.